Hello, I'm Mark Carney. I'm the Vice Chair and Head of Transition Investing at Brookfield Asset Management and uh, also the uh, UN Special Envoy on Climate Action. Mark, you have a great wealth of policy and finance related knowledge, both in Canada and internationally. So considering the changing nature of the Canadian and global economies, how should Canada's policy and finance ecosystems adapt in order to best compete in the future economy? I'll suggest two on the um, on the policy slash uh, finance side and, 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 and both go to the changing nature uh, of our economies and many economies around the world. And the first is in and around the nature of uh, data and digital services. The nature of investment has shifted quite substantially uh, over the course of you know, the last 30 years or so, uh, more away from tangible uh, investment into investment um, in intangibles, um, in ideas and in goodwill and in, in marketing and processes, all those aspects. Now, it's much easier to raise money against a physical asset, you know, borrow against a building, borrow against a plant and machinery. It provides a, a degree of, of comfort and protection for the bank, if you, in, in this example, uh, that's lending uh, against uh, lending to the entrepreneur. Um, it's much harder, um, or it has proven harder, uh, to uh, lend against uh, intangibles, even though. Uh, the intellectual property and these elements are increasingly uh, core to competitiveness. Now, the good news is that um, part of the changing nature of the economy provides part of the solution to that question, um, which is um, we are learning um, and some Canadian companies, uh, I'll, I'll point to Shopify at, uh, at the forefront, there are other examples here. Um, Canadian companies are using uh, the much richer data that exists in in the in the sociograph uh, that exists in online commerce um, to uh, provide better pr uh, predictiveness of uh, viability of companies, and therefore you can lend to those companies earlier. You can lend to them more. You can help them grow much more rapidly. So that's one area, and and you know that whole ecosystem around uh, intangible finance. Um, and uh, financing of small entrepreneurial businesses. Uh, we really need to concentrate on that. Uh, that means uh, intellectual property protection. It means uh, data portability uh, and smooth uh, data portability. It means um, things like decentralized finance and helping to develop decentralized finance uh, in rapid order. And so I, I would put a, a tremendous emphasis on rapidly growing that ecosystem because of the the companies, the innovators who borrow, who will borrow and get capital because of the ecosystem. But by the way, also because that ecosystem is not something that was, is just relevant for Canada. It's got global application and we're good in finance in general. Um, and if we really uh, focus our minds at it, we, we can build out. That was one big block. If you're still with me, Tim, the other big block I, I would focus on is not going to surprise you is around um, continuing and really accelerating what we have started to build which is this um, uh, financial system for the net zero transition. And it, it starts with disclosure. It includes tools such as stress testing um, and importantly, looking at how well aligned companies are to, uh, to the transition and making sure that we get capital to the innovators, to the businesses, to the people with the ideas who know how to get emissions down and a financial system that's oriented to that um, combined with what the public wants and, and also public policy uh, can really accelerate um, innovation and, and growth in this country. Well, Mark, I'll, I'll pose you a challenge then. Considering those shifts in the economy, what is the one area or opportunity that should be a priority for Canada now? And who has to do what in order to make Canada as competitive in that space as possible? I think it's it's a good challenge, um, and I'm going to I, I will pick one. I'd like to pick them all, and I think Canada can can pick them all, but I will pick one. I'm going to focus in on that transition to net zero, and the reason I'm going to do that is look, this is a um, uh, around a two trillion dollar investment opportunity uh, in Canada over the course of the next couple of decades. It's about a hundred and fifty trillion dollar investment 
opportunity around the world over the course of the next 25 years. Those are enormous. They sound like big numbers. They are absolutely uh, enormous numbers. The way I think about those numbers is about a third to a half of, of those numbers are existing technologies that are applied at scale you know, across our economy. And it's, you know, it's putting capital to work and putting people to work doing that. Now, you can always do things better. You can always uh, save costs and be more efficient. And so there's some innovative opportunities there. But what's really exciting and necessary, I think, for our medium and longer term success is the next swathe of technologies. So these are technologies like um, hydrogen, um, carbon capture and storage and use, direct, um, uh, uh, some elements of direct air capture. I'll come back to that in a moment. Um, and these are technologies that are close to being commercial, huge markets for them, and actually hugely important for our development of our next phase of uh, energy security and sustainability here in Canada. And then there's a last set of technologies that um, think small mar modular reactors, think direct air captures, uh, sustainable aviation fuels, all of those, which are more at the uh, venture capital end of the spectrum. I'm sorry, Tim, I'm going to add as well that through all of this, through a slice through all of this, is that artificial intelligence machine learning opportunity of, uh, of optimizing everything uh, uh, you know, across the grid, if you will, uh, in all senses of the word, um, that again, Canada can play in. My point is, um, if something's going to cost an estimated $2 trillion in Canada, an estimated $150 trillion around the world, um, just by definition, that's an amazing opportunity. My challenge is for Canadian business and on, on uh, innovators to focus on this area. Well, if Canada is to seize our fair share of this net zero opportunity, what must Canadian governments and industry players do in terms of our policies and financial systems? to really set the country up on a path of leadership and success uh, in that net zero space. I've long advocated that governments really do need to step up, not just with objectives. Um, we're all for the net zero objectives and a time path to that, but very clear, deep decarbonization objectives along the way. So issues like the clean grid by 2035 uh, in Canada, or as well, the end of internal combustion engine vehicle sales in the 2030s. Clarity on the carbon price, I think, has been important as well. Uh, there will be issues with hydrogen fuel mandates and contract for differences for hydrogen as well. All of these deep decarbonization policies that are very clear, very simple, far enough in the future that uh, you can do something about it as an innovator, but close enough that as an incumbent or company, you have to do something about it. So it creates the urgency, but also just enough time in order to act on it. I think those are essential from government. Second thing government has to do is really finish the job on um, on uh, the, the, having the information and the tools and the markets for the net zero financial system. We're, we've been a bit slow in Canada on this. We've done a lot of consultation on it. The world's moving, we need to move, we need to move now. We know what to do, we just need to get on with it. We have this great network of connectivity, USMCA, so-called new NAFTA, the European trade deal, the TPP with Asia. We need to make sure that part of that and 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 is uh, is a low carbon that this, this these are low carbon trading relationships uh, because Canada will be very well uh, positioned for that as we move to a zero carbon grid over the course of the next decade as we move to zero carbon ground transportation in the country. So we want to press that advantage, um, uh, you know, because it's the right thing to do, but also uh, because it will create a great opportunity for Canadians. Well, should Canadian government play a role in all of this? And if so, how should Canadian governments approach this challenge? And what do they need to do now? I think they do play a role. I mean, business does play a role. Um, I'm I'm always a little leery. I'm was a little leery of business being too reliant on government and and uh, and some sort of government process. Uh, in the end. Uh, I, I'm a stronger believer in setting clear goals, frameworks, regulation where needed, um, and then industry, business, uh, innovators figuring out the best way to accomplish those goals, as opposed to settling down on a on a on an agreed consensus, laboriously lowest common denominator, you know, laboriously negotiated path uh, that may or may 
not be the right uh, right answer. Um, now that said, um, there for certain emergent technologies and necessary technologies, there is this um, continuum from the primary research, the early stage commercialization, and then the uh, the scaling up. Uh, there's elements of that in uh, in energy technology. Um, I think the uh, to flip over to um, back into uh, AI and, and data sciences. Uh, you know, yes, the frameworks for data privacy, um, uh, cross-border use of uh, data, uh, algorithmic bias, all, all those necessary components um, of, 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 of that ecosystem. Uh, cooperation between business and government is important. It needs to be informed as these, uh, as these um, uh, rules and, and standards are put in place. And very importantly, uh, I think the way the world's going to go is that as much as possible, if we can have those consistent across um, our trading areas um, so that what works in Canada works uh, in USMCA, works in Europe, works in, um, in TPP, then that, that creates a, an enormous market opportunity for uh, Canadian business. Well, Mark, your recent book titled Values, Building a Better World for All, touches on this concept of mission-oriented capitalism. So what is the role that you see policymakers and the financial system playing uh, in terms of driving this type of capitalism forward here in Canada? What I see this as is being clear about, and this is the values element, if you will, of that book, which is what do we want as Canadians? What do we want as a society? And then how do we get value, the market, the innovators, uh, how do we line them up so that they come up with the solutions to get us to those objectives? So the, the, the classic, if you will, example in this case is sustainability. We want, as Canadians, sustainability. You see it in uh, the way people behave. You see it in polling. You see it in voting uh, patterns, et cetera. People want sustainability. They don't necessarily know exactly how to get there, but it's clear what the objective is. Um, and so that's the mission. And then the role of government is to translate mission into clear objectives that then the innovators and businesses can move towards. And that is the process really that's only in the last few years has started to happen and gain uh, traction, which is moving from a general desire for sustainability, a general desire for a cleaner world, a greener planet, um, to uh, an objective to achieve net zero, to have certain uh, medium term objectives consistent with that to have not just current regulation and standards that support that journey, but the prospect of future ones, a credible prospect of future ones that really incentivize the type of investment. And so that sense of mission can drive things. Now, I, I would add as well that, you know, this is, you know, in parallel with this and related to this is, well, a better world for all, a better Canada for all Canadians. How do we make Canada truly more inclusive? How do we create opportunities uh, for Canadians across this country? Um, part at, and, and making that truly part of our mission and one of the tests of our success is, you know, what kind of jobs do people get? What uh, sort of social mobility do, uh, do people have in, in, in different groups across the country? Uh, uh, how is the financial sector helping or is it hindering uh, that, uh, th that uh, social mobility? And therefore, what can we do uh, as innovators, as policymakers to change those outcomes? Mission, inclusiveness, mission, sustainability, um, and working together uh, to uh, mark progress 